Welcome to the Krista McAuliffe uh, Space Education Center. This room is called the Discovery Room. Maybe Mr. Williamson can tell us a little bit about it. This is the room where we teach our whole group science instruction on a field trip. So students spend an hour in this room. Uh, this year we're studying electromagnetism and space geography. And uh, it's an audio-visual presentation with a lot of visuals and demonstrations done at the front table. We also uh, use this room for our advanced math class. The Space Center sponsors an advanced math course that we teach first period here for our sixth graders. It's a pre-algebra course, and that's also taught here. And uh, I teach that class. And here we are inside the Sorry, Magellan. No, no, you're good. Okay. We've got some kids and students and people that recognize us. You can see this is set up as kind of a simulated deck of a spaceship. We'll pull around and I'll just take a quick shot here. They've got computers that are set up. With uh, now, what computers do you have here? They're Apple's, obviously. These iMacs. These are Emacs. Emacs, older mm -hmm. versions. Of older them. versions. And we put them behind the black plastic just to give them a futuristic look. Yeah. It may be hard to tell in the video, but there is a piece of black glass in front of the, the screen. But other than that, they're really just using a basic computer. We're stepping into the Phoenix. This is one of the other spaceship modules. You can see again sets of computers. Just kind of set up. This is our, this used to be our newest ship until the new Galileo opened. Uh, we're experimenting with trying to build with materials which require less maintenance. Maintenance is always an issue with us. And so we use metal floors now and FRP paneling on the wall, which doesn't require paint. Um, we use laptops in here just because it's such an enclosed environment. And again, the laptops are behind the plastic. And so you've got, this is a six-person ship, so you've got uh, the stations here, and your captains here, and these are just little, uh, we call it set dressing, but these are little uh, activities that the kids have to go through to make the ship work correctly. So we're able to put out, you know, emergencies where the kids not only do a combination of computer work, but also dials and switches which the kids love. One of the things we use here are these old darkroom doors. They're awesome when it comes to transitioning between the real world and the fantasy world. I mean, when you don't have what Disneyland has, being able to take the kids through a million dollar loading set before you actually get into it like you do with Space Mountain where you walk through that whole cool area before you get on the ride. So when you do the low-tech version, you put a little turning door like this, and the kids have never seen one of these before because dark rooms are on their way out with digital photography, so it just becomes a really cool way of transitioning them into the ship. We're in the Odyssey. It looks like the Odyssey is one of your overnight mission locations. Yes, yes. This ship's got bunks. Uh, it's got a little engineering section in the back, similar to the Phoenix, but the kids have to crawl in there to do all the little dial and switch work. Uh, we have a station up here. You'll, you'll see that uh, we're masters at utilizing every possible square inch of space because the school doesn't have much to give us, so if we can get a yard or two, we have to take maximum use of it. So uh, this ship will hold eight. You've got your different stations here, and then your captain is there, and your flight station's in the front. This was the ship we used also as the submarine for our fourth grade adventures. Now, do you still do the submarine activity? We don't. And which grades are involved in, when, in this? Uh... Uh, we see fourth through sixth grades for field trips. Well, we actually have junior high and senior highs that come here as well. The junior high and senior highs, though, only come for the mission. They don't stay for the planetarium and the science because our science class is geared to the fifth and sixth grade state core curriculum. This is the control room. This is where we work to produce our flights. This is our flight director station. And we call that area there the second chair. It's kind of messy here. We're transitioning between our school field trip and getting things ready for our overnight camp tonight. So that's why you've got junk everywhere as they get things ready and set up for our overnight camp. So this is the Voyager. Hello. And you can see that they're getting ready for a field trip. Emily is a flight director. She's also an EMT, so she gets to wear the red EMT shirt. And now, Brittany is a flight director for the Magellan ship. And Alex is a flight director for the Phoenix. And he's one of our student programmers who programmed the Phoenix. 
And the Galileo. And the Galileo. And, yes. And he dabbles in the rest of the ships as well. We can move on through here. So this is the main ship used for field trips. The command station is up here on the platform. And then the engineering station is here. Again, utilization of every square inch. Uh, four students sit there. We call that sensor scanners, navigation, life support. Communications is on the lower level where Britain is. We call this the left side. That's damage control, tactical, power distribution, shields. Up here is our science station and records. And back here is the ship security station. Now, from what I understand, the ship security station is actually kind of important because sometimes there are invasions. Uh -huh. Whatever you'd see in a Star Trek episode, we will, we will try to do here. So um, they may encounter friendly aliens or they may encounter aliens that do things we don't agree with, slavery, you know, whatever. And sometimes, uh, as any ship would have to do, they have to defend themselves and so the security station. It's a, also a 13-deck ship with 300 people on board. 15-deck ship with 300 people on board. This is our galley crew quarters. This is the main dormitory for overnight camp. So we have bunks here for the staff, for the kids. There's a little bathroom and shower in there. And um, uh, another little area for bunks in there. So this is the new Galileo. This was designed by Kyle Herring and the BYU Engineering Department. And um, again, uh, more work with uh, maintenance-free, so aluminum. It's got a hydraulic door, and it's, you don't have it powered up, but it's a five, uh, it's a six-person station that can sleep four. And you've got uh, the command areas in the front. This particular set uses touch screens, which is where we want to go with our next generation. Take away the keyboard and the mouse and make all of our ships touch screen. I mean, it'll take years to do it, but we started with this one because this was our newest. And we're experimenting with the pros and cons, working out the bugs, and then we'll slowly transition out to the rest of the ship. Okay, so Mr. Williamson, I was just talking to you about uh, some of the things that go on and I mentioned that my son has been involved in the space missions and really in, in interested in this, but uh, he's never seen an episode of Star Trek. You had a story about that. Can you tell us? Well, when the Star Trek movie came out, um, a lot of kids went to see it because their parents are fans or remember the show. Mm -hmm. So what you've got here are 700 kids a week coming to the Space Center, and they're seeing Star Trek here. They're living Star Trek. Warp speed, photon torpedoes, the whole bit. So you've got kids now going to this Star Trek movie, and they're sitting in the theater watching the movie, and they're hearing the same terminology, and they see these starships. And they immediately, and I knew this would happen, they immediately begin to think either one copied the other or the, we copied them. And during one of the overnight camps, we had a boy, just while he was going to bed, he came up to me and he said, Mr. Williamson, I went to see that Star Trek movie. Aren't you upset? And I said, upset about what? And he said, well, they copied you. They stole all your ideas to make that movie. And so I had to explain to him that actually it was the other way around, that we're using all of those ideas from the old Star, Star Trek franchise. And he thought that was pretty interesting because he didn't even know there was a Star Trek TV series. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's not commonly known anymore. No, it isn't. It isn't. And a lot of our staff have never seen it. In fact, we have one flight director who works the Odyssey simulator. And he's been a flight director here for a little while, but he only now is starting to watch the Star Trek series, even after he's been telling Star Trek stories now for quite a while. So it's interesting. It is. <laughs>